Welcome, welcome, NSHSS attendees. Um, it is a wonderful Thursday. Let us know where you're joining us from in the chat. Here at NSHSS, we're located in sunny Atlanta, Georgia. Um, JC, where are you joining us from today? I'm in Los Angeles. Wow, so totally opposite sides of the country we're joining you from today. Um, we've got North Carolina, another East Coast represented. Um, another Georgia represent, very nice. Throughout the series this week, we've had people joining us from, from all over the world, actually. We had some folks from Japan and India and Canada on this week, which is amazing. Um, yeah, if you're joining us right now, we're going to give just a few minutes here to let some other attendees join us tonight before we get started. Let us know where you're calling in from today um, here at NSHSS. Like I said, we're Atlanta, Georgia. Don't forget Alaska. Absolutely. I think you were on with us last night talking about how cold it is in Alaska. Very nice. <laughs> How's the weather in California, JC? It's, uh, it's probably 75 and sunny outside. That's pretty much what it is this time of year after the fog wears off in the morning. So it's, uh, it's warm already. So and yeah. So yeah, I was sweating today here in Georgia. <laughs> yeah. But it's not the same case in Alaska right now. It's also four o'clock here. So we're getting a little bit of light in the background. Um, it's still pretty much, you know, full sun here. So very nice, very nice everyone's joining us from all over. Yeah, it's awesome to have everyone here tonight from all over the U.S. and maybe even the world. Let us know if you're international. We always love hearing from our international members. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started here at 7.02 where I'm at. So we're going to get started two, two minutes after the hour here. Um, this is our or, or fourth rather session in the college and career series this week for NSHSS. Tonight we have JC Schillen with us from FastWeb. JC is the Senior Marketing Manager at FastWeb. She focuses on FastWeb's educator and student initiatives that support helping students find ways to pay for school. She's located in Los Angeles, as she said, and has been a part of Monster.com, which is the parent company of FastWeb for more than 13 years. JC has spoken to thousands of people participating in many educator and student events. She's thrilled to be able to have this chance to talk and meet with our members and parents, even if it's not in person just yet. JC hopes you all find this an interesting review of how FastWeb can help students and can help our members. So um, without further ado, JC, I will toss it to you. Thank you so much, Grace. And thanks everyone for taking the time to join us, uh, join me and join FastWeb this afternoon. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I have a presentation to go through what FastWeb does and a little bit about scholarships and um, I hope you enjoy the presentation. So let's get started. Uh, Grace, I'm gonna need you to tell me whether you see my screen or not. Do you see not my quite screen? Yet. Do you see the back page? No, not quite yet, Daisy. There we go. Now we see it. Yay. Okay. So again, um, welcome everyone. Uh, uh, my name is JC. I am coming to you from Los Angeles and I'm going to go ahead and go through um, a little bit about FastWeb and what we do and then a little bit about scholarships. So let's get started. So first of all, FastWeb is the leading online resource in helping students pay for school. We have just entered our 27th year. Um, we are highly um, recommended by educators throughout the country. And um, you'll probably even find a link to FastWeb on the resource page of your, of your school's website. So um, we take pride in that respect that we get from the community. And that's why we're here today to bring you the service that we provide. Um, let me start off by saying that FastWeb is 100% free. It's a service for students at all levels. And uh, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about what scholarships are and how we match you to scholarships that um, meet your profile characteristics. So first of all, what are scholarships? Um, scholarships are um, is, is money provided to students to use for school, for their education. 
Um, they're considered awards uh, and they do not need to be paid back. Uh, they're available for students at all levels. Um, and they are available for more than just football players. And a lot of times it's like, uh, how do I get a scholarship? I don't play sports. The truth is there's scholarships for all skill levels, student, all different student interests, scholarships that meet personal attributes, and of course, scholarships that match the major that you're interested in studying. Um, scholarships come from schools, from organizations, from corporations, from local governments, and many private sources. So there's a lot of places where scholarships are out there waiting for students to apply. So I'm gonna go through some screenshots of FastWeb itself so that you can see what it looks like on our site. Uh, this is our homepage. When you go to our homepage, you'll see a lot of information about getting started. And that is what I'm going to focus on today. So the first thing you'll need to do if you haven't already done it is become a FastWeb member. And the way to do that is on the upper right screen, it would be uh, to click into the sign up and you're going to register. It's more than registering. You have a registration function and you have a uh, profile function. So they are together in one action, but as I'm going to show you, um, you can do one and not do the other. So I'm going to encourage you to do it all. This is our registration homepage. And like any registration on a website, it's got all the basics. And the main one for us is, um, your birth date so that we know that you're 16 or older and also so that we can match you to your school year, uh, your email account, and whether you want to subscribe to our different email functionality that provides you scholarship information. Um, you could stop right here and you'll get scholarships, but you don't wanna do that. You wanna go on to the additional pages of what we call the student profile. This is where you'll enter your interests, your major, the schools that you might already be planning to attend, um, and so we encourage you to take the time once you get started and go through the whole thing and then keep it fresh. Every time you add a, a skill, go back into FastWeb and update that, that profile. Um, I do want to say one other thing. I work with this every single day, FastWeb, scholarships, financial aid. A lot of times I'll say something that I think I understand that because I work in it, but I don't realize that you don't understand. So if there's anything that I say, uh, and you have a question about it, put a question in the Q&A. At the end, we're gonna go through a portion of this where I answer questions and I'm gonna do my best to cover something that maybe I wasn't clear about, or maybe I, something that I just didn't address because there is so much going on. This is a brand new language when you start dealing with scholarships and financial aid and paying for school. So I um, just wanted to get that out there. Um, please enter your questions. All right, let's move on. Okay. So I talked about the profile and I'm gonna talk about it again. Your unique profile features are what generates the scholarship matches that we show you. And scholarship matches are the current scholarships that are open for you to apply to. So the more extensive your profile is, the better we can target matches to you specifically. So in this image, it shows things like majors, but also, as I said before, your interests, um, your school level, um, and, and an extensive list of various features that you can say about yourself helps inform our database as to the best matches for you. Okay, so we're assuming you've gone through and you've entered all of your student profile information and then you have what's called the member or student profile. And this is um, the beginning of your dashboard. Once you've gone through the process, you've opened up your dashboard, your fast web scholarship dashboard. So um, this is just a slide that shows some of your educational activities. And this is a screenshot. So what you can't see is this, this keeps going down and adds all of those bits that you just put in your profile in a way in which you can see them. But why I show you this slide is because the most important part is up at the top. That shows you the potential value of the matches we found, the total number of matches that we found, and then on the left, you'll see it says new matches. Now, when I ran this profile, there was one new match I hadn't looked at yet. So in total, they're 93, but one is new. So this is a uh, sort of a front page of your dashboard, but I'm gonna show you your main dashboard. It's coming up. Okay, but, but first, before I do that, I wanna explain that we have 
we take pride in the scholarship opportunities that we put in the database. And we have a research team whose sole function is to make sure that any opportunity is valid, active, and appropriate. So one of the things we always say is if somebody asks you to pay for a scholarship application, that is not good. That is not good. You do not want to do that. Scholarship applications are free. Everything we put in our database is free. Everything we do at Fastway is free. But it's important to know that there's a team of people whose sole job it is, is to make sure that the, the scholarship opportunities that are in the database are good, are good for you. And we have done the pre-check so that we can show you so then you can take it to the next step. It's a little more dry information, real quick. This is just a small amount of the requirements that we, uh, that we put forth before something goes into our database. First and foremost, they cannot ask you for a social security number, credit card number, and there is no fee. Top of the, of the heap, ask those things, we're not even gonna consider you. Plus, every scholarship must have a privacy policy. It may must have terms and conditions. They must show that they have done the legal due diligence to set up a scholarship in order to um, bring in students' information. And then, of course, the part that works for us on the database side are all the details of the submission. The regular things like the deadline date and the description and the number of scholarships available for that particular award, uh, residency requirements, that type of thing. And then, of course, more personalized uh, attributes like things that might be attached to clubs or professional organizations, cultural heritage, religious, uh, a religious affiliation, gender, sports, hobbies, all those things. We take all that and put that into the database so that, again, it informs the profile that you put in that there's something that matches to you. All right, let's look at some more fun stuff. This is, uh, we're past the dry stuff at this point. Okay, this is the uh, dashboard on fastweb.com. And this dashboard has a lot of features to it, and I'm just going to show you a few of them. This is a screenshot, so I will not be showing a live demonstration. But basically, what I did here was I sorted by the amount of the award, and what came up to the top of the page were these awards, with these high values. Um, you can sort by college, um, by major, by location, um, by deadline, by name, um, so that you can look at however you best interpret what is in your dashboard. Um, it'll always tell you at the top how many scholarships there are. Usually you get about 20 per page. This particular profile had 92 scholarships. Um, at the top, it'll show you how many matches you have not looked at. In this case, when I ran this, it was 29. Um, and then of course, off to the right, um, off to the left, you'll see that there's a new tag next to that $25,000 Be Bold scholarship telling me that that is a brand new entry since the last time I came in. Um, also to the right, you'll see a, uh, some flags that you can assign to the various scholarships to say, are you interested? Um, are you gonna look at it later? And there's some other things. So then that way you can set your own status because as you can see with 92 scholarships, that's a lot to consume at one time. So if you can find a way to manage and create a dashboard that's meaningful for you, um, we've given you all these different tools to do that. Okay, so let's see what it looks like when you actually click into one of these scholarships. So I picked the Stuck at Prom Scholarship Contest. This is a very popular scholarship, um, open to high school students. So almost every student in our database that has a high school designation will see this scholarship, but I picked it because um, it shows you a couple different things. For one, up top is the most important information. Um, the amount of the scholarship, how many awards are available, and the deadline. And most important, where you go to apply. Now, if I didn't, if I wasn't 100% clear before, we are a scholarship matching service with a database. We are not a scholarship provider. So our, what, what we do is bring you the opportunity, and it's up to you then to take that opportunity and decide if it's right for you. So that is where the apply now button comes in. That apply now takes you directly to the scholarship provider's website to then go to the next steps. It doesn't automatically apply for you. It takes you to where you have to go to do that. Okay, so underneath the light blue box, you will always find out how you match to this. And in this case, the only thing that I matched to on this, for this profile in particular, because this is a very open 
for every one scholarship is age. So it recognized my age and it matched me to it. Um, in other cases, if let's say I was a STEM, if I was a STEM major and this was an engineering scholarship, it might pop up and it might say engineering major along with age or whatever else the criteria is, of course, not with stuff at prom, but with other scholarships. Um, and then of course, you're gonna get a description, a basic description that we have gotten from the scholarship provider. We don't make that up. That's pretty much taken from them. Okay, I'm going to take a breath here and look here on the right. And this um, is just a very short list of good tips. And the first thing is, it's very overwhelming to start looking for scholarships while you're looking for colleges, while you're trying to finish your senior year, or your junior year. Um, so make a scholarship, um, uh, make a schedule for looking at scholarships. Saturday mornings, Thursday at four. Oh, you can't do Thursday at four, you're here with me. But any other Thursday at four, but, um, or seven, depending on where you're at, but give yourself a piece of your day to do this. And uh, it can be more than one day. That way you kind of have parameters to work by because if not, it can become very overwhelming. Um, so the next thing is apply early. In particular, this one has a deadline of July 21st. Apply for it now, don't wait for the deadline. Go ahead and get your application to that scholarship provider as soon as you feel ready to do that. Um, stay organized. You can do that using the FAFSA uh, uh, dashboard. You can do that in any way that you want to, but staying organized is going to be key as you're going through the process and more and more scholarship opportunities come your way. Um, don't count out the lower award amounts. $1,000 scholarships, $1,500 scholarships, that is money to help pay for school. That is money to help pay for housing, to pay for books. So don't disregard it, even if it's not a $10,000 scholarship, because it's still helping you with your goal in paying for school. And then finally, as I said before, you know, beware of anything that doesn't seem right. Um, if it doesn't feel right, it doesn't seem right, don't bother with it. Um, or, you know, consult your school counselor and ask them if, if they've ever heard of it. Um, it wouldn't be coming from us, but there's a lot of sources to get scholarship information. Okay, so that is what it looks like when you're on the site. Okay. Um, so in addition to being on the site and seeing actually what's in your matching uh, dashboard, uh, we will send you email notifications when a new scholarship is matched to you and when scholarships are, are um, expiring. Uh, we like to make sure that we can pull that together so that you know that the deadline is coming up. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit about our email notifications next. And then we do have an app. The app is uh, designed with a dashboard on it so you can actually see the same um, dashboard matches, um, and you can interact in the same way. So this, these are some screenshots of various uh, emails that you'll get from us. And um, if you know anything about us, you know we send a lot of email. And the reason we do that is because we are constantly getting uh, new uh, scholarship opportunities into the database, and we match you and we email you. We don't wait, we do it. So. Um, that is why I said that having a schedule as to when you would look at everything is a good idea so that you don't get overwhelmed. Don't feel like every time you get an email, you have to act on it. The best thing you can do is just try and add it into your plan. Um, the screenshot in the middle is our new scholarships award notification email. At the top, we'll always show you the new scholarships. And toward the bottom, we'll show you some existing scholarships that might um, be um, close to newly matched or close to expiring. It depends on what the system decides to put into that update. On the left is a copy of a weekly uh, newsletter, which also contains information about scholarships. But in addition to that, there's a lot of articles that we put together. We take a lot of pride in the information we bring our students. And I'm gonna go into that a little bit next. And then on the right is a, a weekly theme email. Uh, this one in particular was our Earth Day theme. Generally, what we do is find some good scholarships to show you that fit the theme and just um, remind you that you may not have matched to this, but you may have some interest in it and there might be something that you should pursue. Okay, so um, we use the word tools a lot. Uh, the dashboard is a tool, um, our emails are tools, and some of the other tools that we use uh, that we have available um, what I'm going to show you in particular is our national scholarship directory. Now, I've mentioned a few times now that we do scholarship matching. 
we are a search engine. We are a matching service. So basically your profile is doing the matching. So you don't have to search every day. You don't have to go in every day and go look for scholarships. You don't need to do that. However, there are some tools you can use to search various scholarships. And I'm gonna show you some of those right now. This is a screenshot of our National Scholarship Database. Um, I'm sorry, National Scholarship, scholarship Directory. Um, what it basically is, is a grouping of scholarships based on a, um, a theme or a group of uh, profile parameters. Like you can see on there, college freshmen, Italian students, um, Hispanic students, students who receive foster care. There are a bunch of different categories. And those little white boxes at the top, we call those chiclets. So you can click on a chiclet and it will take you to the section where you will find scholarships that fit that group. Um, the largest and the newest are what we show. We don't show you everything. We're giving you a snapshot of the kind of things that fall into that category. Um, and in the, in the larger categories, like down below, I have a screenshot of what it looks like when you browse into the majors, which you would also see on this page if you could see down a little bit. And then as you get into the majors, you can see all those other sub-majors, well, major individual majors that you can keep clicking into, which will keep showing you scholarships, the largest and the newest. And it really gives you an idea of just the level of scholarship opportunities that are out there. And a lot of our students like to search on their own um, and look beyond what they're seeing in the matches. And it's a very successful tool. Um, the other thing that we look at as a tool is our editorial and articles that we put together. Um, we spend a lot of time and we have a group of professionals who's, who, is very, who are very dedicated to bringing students the best information that we can, the most relevant information for them. Um, we talked a little bit about weekly newsletters. I talked about weekly newsletters. Um, we also have monthly checklists where every month we put together a checklist of things that you should be doing for May. And I show a, a image here of our checklist for high school juniors and high school seniors for May. Um, we also do a lot of theme articles. Um, I, I show a couple of the images here on some of the more recent articles. We just put out our Asian Pacific American Heritage Month article. Generally, it's some information, including scholarships that are around that theme. Um, some of the other recent themes are the class of 2021, Women's History Month, our Earth Day. Um, and then in addition to that, we do a lot of student life articles. Again, a lot of them are tied to scholarships. Sometimes they're not. We just had a very successful part-time jobs article, which uh, we had a, a great response to. Um, we also do financial aid articles, and we also do uh, articles on college admissions. And a couple of the recent ones is one on the National Decision Day, one on internships, and one on the stimulus package. And I'm going to show you where you can find all of our articles. So we do have an article section. Um, it also contains chiclets up at the top, so you can look at articles by theme. Um, the main page of the article page is going to show you um, the most recent article. And for example, on the right, I show you what it looks like when you actually open up the article and read through it. They're generally very, um, uh, very uh, student focused. We want to bring information, we bring it in groups, like in this particular case, this was the part time summer jobs article. And it, it's literally in alphabetic order as to various jobs. So it started with animal caretakers, babysitter or nannies, baristas, and it goes on and on. So we take a lot of pride in our articles, um, and I'm going to introduce you to our editorial team. So um, Shauna and Catherine are our main editorial um, uh, team members. Catherine has been with uh, FastWeb for many, many years, and Shauna's been with us for several years as well. Uh, both of our editors have been in the college admissions world, so they have a very good sense of the kind of information to bring students. Um, and they are dedicated to bringing information and you may even see them show up in our social media as well. They've been, uh, they've been doing quite a, a few things there as well. Um, in addition to that, we have the FastWeb Student Contributor Program, which is a program that runs from September to June. Students apply every year to be writers for FastWeb. And uh, they could be from high school, college, or graduate uh, students. Right now, we, this year, we only had high school and college students. They write articles about student life. They are fantastic. Um, and they are coming to, the, the team we have now, we have nine of them, are coming to a close um, in June. And um, this will be the end of their year. 
and we will open up applications for a new set of student contributors. So if anyone out there is a student writer or is interested in writing, um, we will be opening up for application. And once you set up your, um, your membership for FASFA, you will get an email saying that the student contributor team application period is open. So I hope that I have some interested folks out there. Um, and uh, it's been a very successful program. We're very, very proud of it. And we, we love our writers. Okay, so of course, please follow us on social media. This is the fun side of Fast Web. Um, we are uh, on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook, uh, Pinterest and LinkedIn as well. Um, we are, we try and bring fun, interesting content to Instagram and to Twitter and Facebook. Um, and we hope that you will follow us and like us and share the content. It's, it's, um, it's our way of getting a little bit closer to our students and, um, we hope you find the, the information compelling and, and uh, we're very proud of what we're doing right now. And again, you might see Catherine and Shauna's face pop up as well. Um, they haven't asked me to do it yet, but maybe me someday, who knows? Okay, so finally, so we are more of the scholarships. We're more than internships too. We also do have internship matches and um, we keep our eye on financial aid. We keep our eye on the FAFSA information. We keep our eye on important dates and tips and student loan information. And we bring this information to you. Um, we need an entire new presentation to go over the level of information that is contained in the subject of financial aid. So what I'm going to recommend is you can go to our financial aid portal. You can dig through the information there. Um, there is important information. We have a FAFSA section. You can dig through that and look at important dates and tips. Of course, the FAFSA is coming to a close at the end of June. So if you haven't done it, you need to. Um, and then there's student loan information there. Um, our sister site, thenaid.org, is also another great place to get information on financial aid. Um, but I wanted to mention this because it is a part of what we do. It's just not going to be a part of the presentation tonight at the level that would be appropriate for it. So please, um, you can go ahead and, and, and take a look at what, what we have available and I hope it's informative. Okay, so that covers FASTWeb, free service, scholarships, money for school, internships, which is a partner and a companion of scholarships, um, how we communicate with you and the tools that we have. So it's a lot of information I know and I just wanted to get to this end slide and say, go ahead and sign up at fastweb.com, answer all of the questions for the profile and then keep it fresh. Um, make sure you opt into the email um, notifications because that's the key way of us communicating with you. And that's how you'll also see internship notifications, newsletters, and our uh, various emails. Um, download the app, you can get it at the Apple store or on Google Play. And you can start applying to the opportunities and the matches that you receive right away. Right away. So it's pretty simple. I'm going to leave this slide up so that you can remember what it is that um, where to go. Not that it's that difficult, but it is fastweb.com. And then you go up to the upper right and you either log in if you have a login or you sign up if you haven't signed up. And so that covers the presentation itself. Um, I see there's a lot of questions in the Q&A. I will do my very best to answer the questions. And if I cannot answer the question, um, then I would suggest that you send the question to info at fastweb.com, but we can talk about that later. So Grace, if you wanna come back on and ask some questions, I am going to do my best to answer. Sure thing, JC, we have quite a few, as you've said, so we'll jump right in. We've gotten a couple of questions as to whether FastWeb matches for scholarships after high school for grad students or for gap year students? That's a fantastic question. There are scholarships for all levels. Um, the majority of scholarships are always gonna be high school senior and college freshman because that is the kind of the sweet spot. But there are scholarships for existing college students, for graduate students, for non-traditional students, for junior high school students. Um, so, we encourage, that's why I said is keep the profile fresh. Make sure that the profile knows your school year and it will keep looking for scholarships that are available. So that is an excellent question. Thank you very much. Awesome. Um, Laura asked, is there a place in FastWeb to add a portfolio for visual arts? Um, 
But no, because remember, FastWeb is a matching service. So what we do is we show you where to go to apply for the scholarship. And then if you are applying for one with visual arts, it's possible that they would then provide you a portal or a place to put that information uh, along with the application. So we are a, um, we are a method by which we show you where to go. And then that is where you would take your actual um, information and visuals and that type of stuff. Does that answer the question, Laura? Well, I, she can't answer back, but I hope that answers the question. Though. Great, yeah, Laura, let us know if that did not answer your question. Um, I know that you have to be 16 or older to sign up on FastWeb, um, but what age or grade level would you recommend students signing up for the first time on FastWeb? Well, I think, you know, no later than the beginning of senior year. I mean, you can, you can sign up if you're a junior at the end of your junior year, and then, um, you know, keep an eye on things as you start prepping for what you might want to um, get awarded for and utilized for going forward. But um, you need to be 16. And then after that, yeah, yeah, I would just say no later than the beginning of senior high school year. Great. Um, Susan is asking, uh, she says it would be great if FastWeb had more than just the student profile. As a parent with multiple children, this would be most beneficial. Will that option be available soon? Um, to, I'm sorry, to clarify, is that to have multiple student profiles uh, lumped into one? Or I'm not quite clear I understand the question. Yeah, so I believe the question is, can you have multiple student profiles associated with one parent? Um, the profile is email based, so it's one profile pro per email address. So that is the situation that um, goes along with how it procures the information from the database. So if you wanted to set up multiple email addresses, you could of course have multiple profiles, but it, it um, or you could combine all the profile details into one profile, but then you would have a lot of things coming in um, that you would have to sort through. So it is one profile per email address. Got it, that makes sense. Um, John is asking, is it more likely to get a full ride to college with several smaller scholarships or just as likely with one full ride? Um, full ride is a, is a loaded, a loaded term. Um, full ride scholarships in, in particular are something that a school would offer to a student directly um, in that sense, um, many, you could always take many smaller scholarships and try and meet your, um, your uh, required, um, your required amount due after you filled out the FAFSA because the FAFSA will tell you how much you, you owe in, you know, after financial aid. So I think that when you apply to a school, you should look and see what scholarships they're offering because you might qualify directly with the school for a scholarship that is very high and can help with costs right away. That's how I would look at it. Gotcha. I think I know the answer to this question, but can you apply to all of the scholarships that you match for on FastWeb? Absolutely. Again, we're not the scholarship provider. These are various scholarship providers. So, um, you know, they, they, you need to apply to as many as you feel comfortable. Just, um, yes. Awesome. Individual opportunities, all of them. Awesome. Um, what is a scholarship schedule that you referenced? Well, I think it, it, it's something that makes, that allows you to be comfortable with the time you're gonna set aside to do this. You can't look for scholarships every day or every time you get an email that comes at you because it can be very, um, not only overwhelming, but you may not be prepared for all the information right then and there. So the best thing, let's say you say, I'm gonna do this Saturday morning from 10 to, from 10 to noon, and I'm gonna have my essay um, you know, writing ready, um, and I'm gonna you know, be ready to write an essay if I need to. I'm going to have my, um, my letters of recommendation ready if I need them. I'm, so having a schedule, knowing the time that you're gonna sit down and do it, being organized allows you to answer those scholarship opportunity applications 
with all the pieces in front of you. So instead of kind of getting started and then not having the time to do it, that's why we recommend that you come up with a schedule that works for you. Hey, you may want to do it every single day and that's fine. But I think I'm, the point I was trying to make was don't feel like you have to answer and apply every time you see a new application, a new uh, match because it, it, it will become too overwhelming. Yeah, definitely providing your time. Um, another question we have is essentially, if a 10th grader won a scholarship, for example, how does it work holding on to that money for when the student actually graduates? Um, that's a very interesting question. And I think it depends on how the scholarship provider will distribute the funds. So if, um, if the funds are to be distributed directly to a school, um, then they may have some arrangement that they do. If it's going to be directly um, distributed to the student themselves, then they may require some type of verification that is going to be used towards school. So um, it's a very interesting question because every provider has their own set of rules. And I, I talked about having a privacy policy in terms and conditions. Well, one of the other things they need to have is a very clear set of criteria that goes along with awarding it who wins it. And so it's important to read up and make sure that um, you understand how something would be distributed and whether you know that that feels comfortable and it fits with where you're at in your school journey. Right, gotcha. Uh, this term has come up a lot through the Q&A. Um, what is the difference sort of between something like FastWeb and the College Cer Scholarship Service Profile, the CSS? Um, I, the CSS that comes out of the uh, Department of Education, I'm not quite sure I know what you're saying. Yeah, I think um, the questions are just referencing, they put CSS, scholar, College Scholarship Service. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% familiar with that particular acronym, but um, FASWEB is a company. Um, this is what we do as a company. Um, and our focus is on providing students with the best information as possible. Do Are there other competitors out there that do this as well? Yes. Um, College Board, I mean, Sally Mae was on the other night and, and they actually have their own scholarship search as well. So there are other scholarship search, search, and I'll use the word search, search providers. Um, we do matching. So we feel like that is something that sets us apart. Um, and again, we don't charge anything, so um, I don't know what the others do. And will they have some of the same things we have? Sure, of course. Um, but we've been doing this for, like I said, um, close to 27, we're in our 27th year, and this is where we put our focus, and we really feel like we bring a great service. So if you find another service you like as well, use them both. You know, whatever you need to do to get on your way, and the best way that you can prepare yourself for a foreign college. Right. Yeah. And you did mention a, a sister side as well. Can you um, touch on that again as yes. well? Yes, yeah, sorry. I should put that on the slide. It's finaid.org, um, F-I-N-A-I-D.org, finaid.org. It is a uh, directory of information about financial aid. And um, it is our sister site. There is a lot of information there um, um, from the Department of Education. There's information on how loans work, that's a big one because a lot of times people aren't quite clear on loans, um, how financial aid works, what has to be paid back and what isn't paid back, information about the FAFSA. Um, so we have a lot of that information on FastWeb and there's a lot of that information on finaid.org, another free service and free site um, and part of our family. Very cool. Um, and then just to clarify, so a parent can set up an account per se um, and students and parents could access that same account if they're using the same email address, right? That is correct. That is absolutely correct. Um, you know, a parent can set up a profile any way they want. Um, and uh, it, again, it's, it's email based. So an email goes with the profile and you can then work it any way that uh, makes sense for you and your parents. Great. Um, John asks, does household income and um, family numbers, so I guess amount of people in your family have an impact on the availability of scholarships for a student? Um, that's very possible. That would be in the individual 
criteria from the scholarship provider. Um, that certainly has a basis in financial aid. Um, and when you go into the FAFSA, and those are the kind of pieces of information the FAFSA takes into consideration when it's trying to figure out the, uh, the, the cost of college for a student. Um, but the, the depth of that kind of information is going to be found with the scholarship provider. So it's important to read through all of their information so that you understand what it is that, you know, you might actually um, have a chance at getting awarded. Yeah. Um, we have another question. How do, how do we get notified if you won the scholarship? Does FastWeb email you or do you hear from the provider themselves? That's another fantastic question. FastWeb does not know because FastWeb is in the middle. Um, we are the front door to the scholarship provider's house, basically. So we don't, they have no relationship to tell us what happens. Um, they should absolutely notify their winners. Um, we do have a place on, on FastWeb where we've been notified by students who have won. Um, it's kind of this uh, FastWeb winners category. You can find, I think, in the footer, there's a way to get to it. And it shows the people that have notified us that they won, but uh, it is not, it, it is not a criteria of the relationship that we have with a scholarship provider. Got it. Um, let's see, next question we have. Uh, this attendee says, I think you said that the profile birth date determines a student's grade in school, but what if a student is advanced and in a higher grade at a younger age? Oh, um, well, you also, you can also mark what school year you're in. So it, it, it is age, age was on that very first registration screen. When you dig in, yeah, you'll, if you're a high school junior, you say junior, if you're senior, if you're a college freshman, you actually tell the system that. The system then knows what school level you're in. It doesn't do by, do by age. Just so that, that scholarship I showed was one that looked at just age, but that's, that's um, the profile is informed by you. Too. Got it. Another question we have is, um, what happens to scholarship money when you exceed the amount required to cover your cost of attendance to a school? Does the money go to your pocket or is it returned to the scholarship provider? Okay, so that is a complicated question. Um, there will be a relationship between what that scholarship provider will deliver based on what you owe the school in most cases. Um, so if you exceed it, then you may lose some, let's say, financial aid support from the school. They may back off because you have more scholarship money and that's how they'll cover it. So it's, um, every situation is different. Every situation is unique. So it's important to, if you have a full ride scholarship in one way or another already, then you may not need another $5,000 scholarship to go along with that. Um, if you get $5,000 and you only needed four, the school may reduce a thousand dollars worth of other financial aid that they provided for you. So it is a, um, it can be a complicated arrangement between the scholarship provider and you and the school. So uh, it's a very good question and there will be a customized answer for every single case. I mean, it's a good problem to have to know you have more money than you need. Um, so, but uh, again, very good question. And the answer to this question, when do you recommend 2022 graduates start looking for scholarships? I assume that answer would be right away, right? Right away, you can start looking now. Um, and then, you know, certainly gear up for the, the fall. Um, but yeah, now's a good time. Awesome. Um, and Tori asks, how can you tell if a scholarship is a scam, even if it doesn't ask for a fee or sensitive personal information? Um, well, you know, again, there, the research team is, is pretty well versed in, in, in what makes sense or not. Um, having legal terms and conditions, having a privacy policy, um, making sure that there's an end date that is, that makes sense, you know, that is in three years from now or whatever it is. There's a, there's a formula that, that, that sort of informs them that, that this is a legitimate scholarship versus somebody who's um, potentially trying to take advantage. So it's a fantastic question. And our team is, um, that is their job 
Uh, that is their, their role in FAFSA is to make sure that they're finding legitimate, um, appropriate scholarships. Awesome, that's fantastic. Um, what might be a reason why someone may have not been able to create an account on FAFSA for legal reasons? Well, there's there's two main pieces of criteria for FAFSA. One is uh, you need to be 16 or older. Uh, the other is that you need to have a United States address, or uh, um, and and so it is not an international site. It's not a site for students that have an international address. Um, but if you have a United States address, uh, it then works. So other than that, I, I'm not sure what legal reasons would be um, other than those particular things. Gotcha, yeah, and I think uh, the person who answered that question, if you need more information, definitely email info yeah. at fafsa.com, yeah. I mean, you may know of something in particular, uh, I'm not familiar with where, where you're going with that, but again, it is, um, uh, the database will, will only kick off if you have uh, not only a valid email address, of course, um, but a United States address and that you must, uh, you, when you enter your birthday, you must be 16. Gotcha. And then Catherine asks, if a merit-based scholarship is awarded via FastWeb, does that mean the university my student plans to attend will offer a lower merit-based package? Possible. It's possible. Um, and Although it's although we showed it to you potentially as a match from FastWeb, we're not the scholarship provider. So the scholarship provider um, may be able to provide a better answer as to the criteria as to how that will be applied. But yes, it, there there is a uh, sometimes there is an equation that happens that will um, equalize what's actually owed versus what the student has been awarded. And that's and again that's all done at the scholarship provider level not through fast um, i know we talked about that you can really start applying for scholarships anytime is there like a too early to apply for scholarships is there such a thing um well i mean it's hard to say i mean i you know a 16 it depends if you're 16 and you're already a high school junior you know you you could you could be in the right place. Um, that's why I say, you know, it, it might be too early if you're at the beginning of your junior year, but it's definitely not too early for uh, somebody who's going to be a high school senior a year from now. So um, I, I would I would just say end of junior year is beginning of high school senior year is the sweet spot. And then of course, as you go along through your school career, you can keep you know, looking for scholarships when you're a college student and uh, and beyond. So, but yeah, I hope that answers the question. I know that's a tough one. We get asked that a lot. I don't want to discourage anybody, but at the same time, I mean, you need to be realistic as to where you are on your on your journey and when you're ready for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, another question we have um, is: Is there a reason for the 16 years and older limit on FastWeb? Yeah, it, I, I, I have to uh, admit, I, I don't know the exact reason. It's definitely a legal reason. Yeah, it's still it. that makes sense. Are there specific scholarships for homeschoolers that FastWeb offers? Um, I have seen, I have seen homeschool scholarships. Um, I, I would think that like any other scholarship, it also has attributes that are what you study, um, your extracurriculars, your clubs and organizations. So even though you may not be, and, and, I mean, let's face it, everybody was pretty much homeschooled for last year, and, but not in the technical sense of a homeschool, it's just another type of school. It's the type of student that you are that drives the match, what you are as a student. So you can feel free to feel you know, equalized in that sense. Awesome. Um, and when you say apply often, you mean apply often to different scholarship programs. You can't necessarily do multiple applications for the same program, right? That wasn't the best way to say that. Often, <laughs> yeah, often meaning, you know, I guess it was more, if you if you set yourself a schedule and you do it weekly, that's good. If you do it monthly, that might not be often enough. And um, yeah, so that's not really the right way to say that. You can't apply to the same uh, the same scholarship over and over again. Just once you get going, stick with your schedule um, and work it. 
worth it because it's it's money you can use to help pay for school um and it's 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 a free service and so yeah awesome um here's a great question from nathan do some scholarship awards come in after you've been awarded financial aid and how does that affect distribution of financial aid um yes actually um scholarships often come in after financial aid um and again that is going to be a relationship between the distributing scholarship provider, the school, um, and your expected contribution to the amount that you owe after the FAFSA, after financial aid is applied. So um, all of those things are in the mix. Um, but yes, I would, other than a, I would say, other than when you apply to a college and you are provided a scholarship through, this college, through the college, it's kind of more of a, um, a simultaneous act. Um, the scholarships that you may be applying for go beyond uh, that action. So you're, you'll be continuing to look for scholarships after you already know how much you owe and how much financial aid you have. Got it. Um, here's a great question uh, from Zachary. There are scholarships out there that are just random, like color of eyes. Are those real or are those gimmicks? Should we apply for those? I'm sorry, the random what? The random scholarships that are just for like your eye color or your hair color or something basic about yourself are those gimmicks yeah um yeah there are all sorts of of, of of scholarships like that um different providers have different reasons for the criteria that they use um we believe there's value in that in in a lot of those um they are awarding money so some of them make a lot of sense um there are i mean you know, there are scholarships for tall students. There, you know, scholarships for there was you know, the famous one is some guy with the last name of it started with a Z. I don't even remember. But yeah, I mean, if, if you feel like you want to apply to a scholarship like that, go ahead. Um, if it comes out of FAFSA, we've checked it out for you, and it's a legitimate opportunity. It just may not be merit based or you know related to a major. Here's a um, a FAFSA question: Is that money coming from FAFSA, is that aid money or is that a loan? From the FAFSA? From the yes. Department of Education? Okay, so um, there are different categories of funding that comes through the FAFSA, comes from um, uh, federal financial aid. Um, some of it is um, a direct payment uh, that pays down your expected family cost. Um, some of it is a loan that uh, you have interest on that has to be paid back after. And some of it is a, um, a loan uh, that you don't have to pay interest on. And there are different levels of that. That is why most schools will tell you the very first thing you do is to fill out the FAFSA so that they understand what financial support you're getting from the uh, Department of Education. So um, that is financial aid. Many, much of that needs to be paid back. Some of it doesn't. Scholarships do not need to be paid back. Scholarships are grant. Well, they're not grant. They're scholarships or awards. Got it. All right. Another question um, is to clarify the difference between merit-based and need-based scholarships. Well, uh, merit-based would be looking at potentially a school record, um, your academic record. Uh, need-based would be looking at your financial um, ability to meet a certain financial obligation and whether you would meet the criteria of their of whatever they put in as the type of student that, that they consider need-based. So that's how it looks at it. Merit is going to be based on, uh, generally on academics. Sure. Um, this is a topical question we've been seeing all over the place. On your web page, you request SAT scores. What should we report for a student who couldn't take the SAT due to COVID? Um, that is a very good question. And <clears throat> I don't know how the system is addressing that. So I'm going to take a note and we are going to get um, some information put together for that. I, I think that you could skip the question. So um, it's not a required question, but we should be addressing the more general nature of how the SAT is going to play into things going forward. So I think that brings up a really good point. You can skip it. Um, and many scholarship providers still have it in their um, scholarship 
criteria, but they also probably are allowing you to skip it as well. But I think we need to be, we need to um, have a better answer than that, um, as things have now shown us that this is going to probably be the way things are with the SAT. Right. For sure. Or disappearing. I, I don't know what the right word is. I'm not in the SAT business, but I mean, we can all see what's happening. Right, exactly. Um, I think we have time for one more question. And this one I think is good advice for everyone. Without knowing what college you want to go to or what you want to study, what is your advice for starting to apply for scholarships if you don't know exactly what you want to do? Um, well, I think that um, I think that every student has some things that they've done in high school that they could utilize as attributes within the profile so they could see the kind of opportunities that they might have. Um, I think that starting to generate funds to help you pay for school is a great way to do that. If an, uh, uh, an uh, if a opportunity requires that your payout go directly to the school, maybe it's just a little early for you to answer that one. Um, but I don't think there's any harm in seeing what's available and what you think you can actually go for. Um, even if you don't know what your major is going to be or what school you'll end up. Um, trying to generate funds for yourself uh, is important and and it's all part of a group of a lot of decisions that you're going to need to make. So Fast Web isn't going anywhere. We're going to be here when you're ready for us. You don't have to be ready for us right away, uh, but we will be here when you are. So um, all I can say is good luck to all of the students that are you know, going on this quest for higher education. It's been a very tough year. Um, and there, there is so much to gain from this journey. And I just, I, I wish you all good luck. And again, FASFA will be here when you need it. Well, that is a great place to conclude us on, JC. Thank you so much for being here this evening with us or afternoon for you. Um, it was, this is a fantastic, super informative presentation. I know that everyone listening got at least something out of it about scholarships. Um, I think what we learned is it's never too early. Get started now. Go ahead and create your account on FastWeb so you can start getting information. So thank you so much, JC. Thank you to FastWeb, our awesome friends, and the NSHSS team for putting on this, our fourth uh, next to last session in the NSHSS College and Career Series. Don't forget to join us tomorrow night for our finale at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be here with the Army ROTC presenting scholarships with the Army ROTC Learn, Lead, Succeed. So come to learn uh, how you can get even more scholarship money from them. You can follow uh, this QR code to register for that final session. Just point your phone camera to the screen and um, you can register via that. Um, I believe the link is also being dropped in the chat in case you can't scan that um, QR code. Another thing we want to make sure we tell you guys about tonight is the fact that we are so excited to return to in-person events on August 6th and 7th. We will be in Washington, D.C. at the Gaylord National Harbor in National Harbor, Maryland, right outside of the city. Um, this is our return to in-person events, our first one in almost two years. Um, same concept here, you can scan this QR code with your phone screen or follow the link in the chat to get your tickets for Scholars Day now. That event is going to be really exciting. We will have a college and career fair with our university, corporate, government, and educational partners. We will also have some workshops at that event for you. Um, the opportunity to see people in person is always exciting these days. And then, of course, our keynote speaker. Um, you might know him from TikTok, actually. His name is Kyle Sheely. You don't want to miss his speech, so definitely um, register for Scholars Day now and don't miss all of this awesome things. Thank you again, JC. Thank you, FastWeb. Um, I think that's all for tonight. Thanks so much, JC. We will right. see everyone tomorrow for the finale and have a good night. Good night.